Hello and welcome to another episode of Frugal Finance. So today we're going to have a quick look at the stamp duty holiday which is supposed to be ending on the 31st of March. Now a lot of you have got questions on that because obviously there's quite a big saving especially if you're buying a higher end property. Um, so we thought we'd uh, touch on that subject especially whilst we're out having a lovely walk in the sunshine down in the south today. As you can see it's an absolutely stunning day. So without further ado please do not forget to smash the like button, little like button down below, little picture of a thumb, basically just click on it, turn it blue, jobs are good. That actually helps this video then get out to other people who might be looking for advice or information on the stamp duty holiday. Um, whilst you're at it, please don't forget to subscribe. That also helps the channel grow. And then obviously any new videos that I post, you will be able to see those as well. So let's get stuck in. So the stamp duty so basically what's going to happen is on the 31st of march that is going to end and that is a complete currently blanket it ends so midnight on the 31st of uh, march so 1st of april uh, the discount or the holiday on stamp duty finishes um it's effectively uh, a lot of people ask whether or not that is exchange completion how about if i've put in an offer how about if I started the process, gone for a viewing, all that kind of stuff? Well, none of that matters. The most important thing is completion. So it doesn't matter, even if you've exchanged and agreed a completion date four months down the line, it's that date that's four months down the line, which is where you need to um, aim for, uh, because that is the shut off. That is the reason why you will or won't benefit from the stamp duty. So basically, need to get your completion in before 31st of March. That is as it currently stands. Obviously, there's an awful lot of talk and uh, school of thought about the fact that they're gonna extend this. Um, there's been an awful lot in the papers uh, and, new, and press and the rest of it about this being extended possibly to the 30th of June. So if that is the case, then obviously it will likely be an extension to the 30th of June or maybe the 31st of May. Who knows? We'll find out on Wednesday when they announce the budget. But it will be on the same premise of that is the shut-off date. So completion must happen before that time. I'm pretty sure of that. And don't tend to generally make it around exchange dates historically or simply viewings and all that kind of stuff because it's far too vague. You can exchange on a property and put no deposit down and the rest of it and then pull out on the deal later so it will avoid a whole load of people doing that on the basis that it has to be actual physical completion so what does that really mean so basically uh, in a nutshell it means that you've got to complete by that day that's it really um so if you're entered into a transaction at the moment it's going on a bit slow and you're worried that you won't make the 31st of march day you really need to be thinking about how you're going to get it and not have it uh, have the same issue when you come to end of May, end of June. Um, personally, I would be almost still going on the basis that it's the 31st of March. I wouldn't give up your hunting, chasing your solicitors, estate agents, buyers, all that, uh, sellers even, all that kind of stuff just yet. Because actually, the reality is, is they don't, you don't know if they're going to announce this yet. It's obviously a bit of hearsay. If they do announce it, then that's fine. But um you know at the end of the day um you're still going to have to push those through that three month time scale is only 12 weeks so if you only started your process in say january or february of purchasing a property and you're at very early stages you're still going to struggle to get that over the line i believe so you really need to get a hand on it and grasp it and really chase those people along if you want to make maximum benefit of this Obviously, as before, as it's been in place pretty much a year now, this doesn't overly benefit um, you know, property investors because they still have to pay the 3% uh, stamp duty for second home tax. That's still in place. It's the main normal stamp duty. So obviously, if you're a developer buying a, a property at, say, £180,000, um, the actual percentage is still quite low. This is mainly benefiting people who are buying sort of £400,000 homes, family homes, that kind of stuff. Obviously, there is always a benefit, but I don't believe you should take that into calculation when you're looking at your um, return on your investment if you're doing buy-to-let. 
so i hope that helps um clear up the sort of what what is what is it all about and the rest of it and then i see in the paper today there's obviously uh, potential uh, for uh, first time home buyers to have mortgages up to 95% again so that's something that um obviously they remove so it would be a good indication that the government obviously believe long term in the housing market because if if you think about it if they're now willing to back 95% uh, and give the uh, lenders more security um, from their point and allow first time buyers to only pay a 5% deposit they obviously convinced that the housing market is not going to go down so I can only see that as a good news and if it does go down obviously on the basis that if people get into negative equity and uh, in a bit of trouble that's not going to affect the banking system as much as it did back in 2018 uh, eight, sorry not 18 2008 and obviously that's going to uh, because that, yeah, essentially because the government are um backing these uh these valuations or percentage of them is proposed obviously we'll find out more come wednesday but um i, I think that that's a good sign um for the housing market that they're willing to put their weight behind it not just you know artificially prop it up by having a stamp duty holiday um hopefully that will uh allow people to feel comfortable about what they're doing going forward so Anyway, that, that's a brief little update on it. If you do like the video, please do, uh, as I say at the beginning, smash the like button below. It's a, just a little thumb, and if you could turn it blue, that is super for me. Um, it helps the channel grow and get out to a wider audience. Um, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Me having a nice little walk around. Obviously, you can probably tell I am on walking up uh, the middle of a golf course at the moment. It's nice and cut. I'm sure they're all looking super happy to get back soon at the end of March. Um, so, but in the meantime, if you'd like to uh, use any of the links in the description below, you can get up to £100 worth of free stocks and shares with Trading212 and up to £200 with free trade, depending on which company you use. Obviously, I've done videos on which one's better than the other, in my opinion. So please do feel, to watch, feel free to watch those as well. Um, and uh, don't forget that obviously your capital is at risk if you choose to invest in the stock market as you probably all have seen the stock market's been a little bit turbulent this week hopefully it will settle down but that is the nature of the beast so please do take your own advice these are for information and education or entertainment purposes only let me say entertainment because I'm not a financial advisor I am literally just a guy on YouTube talking about finances obviously this video doesn't really cover that that, but some of the others do and you'll see me spiel off a load of stuff in black and white generally towards the end so please don't forget to smash the like button subscribe to the channel and i shall see you next time